Welcome back, Patriots, to the Ball Brad Show. We're jumping right into the news with this gem of a video right here, where this liberal has a meltdown over Americans flying the American flag on American soil. And listen closely, because this is what these liberals think of you. This is what the Democrat Party thinks of you. Let's roll it. I'm here enjoying a nice day at the beach with my kids. And I turn around, I got these flags planted here on the beach by these MAGA fucks. Listen, this is all America. We know you didn't storm the beaches to stake out your territory on the beach. This isn't the fucking moon. I get it. This is America. But I'm sick of my flag being represented by white nationalist trash on a goddamn beach. Go fuck yourselves. And here this is what they think of you, folks. They just assume you're racist. They just assume you're white nationalist. They just assume that you're a bigot, a sexist, a homophobe, whatever the hell it is. They don't have a damn clue because they get triggered over the fact that you're just proud of your nation, that you want to fly the American flag, the red, white, and blue, the 50 stars, the 13 stripes, baby. They get all upset over that. You know, you wear a hat like this, they get upset. You're a racist, right? You represent a country that's of oppression, right? You colonize other nations. You know, if you don't like this country, if you really get so upset by the American flag, why don't you just get the fuck out? This is the greatest country that's ever existed, but you're going to get triggered over Americans being proud of their country. All the while, this libtard right here has to go on social media and complain and assume that a bunch of people are white nationalists. Are you insane? Are you off your rocker? Absolutely, they are, folks. And that's what they think of you. That's what they think of you because you love this country so much. It is wild. Well, speaking of other wild things, we got Joe Biden. <laughs> when don't we have Joe Biden in the news? Well, Biden paints... And we got a video of this, paints a morbid picture for college grads, future in speech meant to uplift them. Now, I want you to listen to this and you tell me if this is a speech that is uplifting people. Here we go. Today, you missed your high school graduation. You started college just as George Floyd was murdered. And there was a reckoning on race. It's natural to wonder democracy you hear about actually works for you. What is democracy? If black men are being killed in the street, what is democracy? The trail of broken promises still leave black, black communities behind. What is Isn't that what Joe Biden did? Made a bunch of promises and left the black community behind, which is why now the black community is looking for Donald Trump to be the next president of the United States? What is democracy? You have to be 10 times better than anyone else to get a fair shot. Most of all, what does it mean, as we've heard before, to be a black man who loves his country, even if it doesn't love him back in equal measure? Just a slow clap. Nobody's intrigued at all by what Joe Biden has to say. So you have people taking the Twitter here. One says, as a black man in America, I find this highly offensive. Yeah. He, along with other Democrats, created the situation most blacks live in today. Oh, do you mean the party that created slavery or at least sit or, sat there and exacerbated? I shouldn't say created it. Uh, you mean the party of the Ku Klux Klan, the party that went against the civil rights movement? You mean, you mean that party that has ideology that actually is a metaphorical plantation that keep black people down? You mean, you mean that party? You're right, Will Johnson. You're absolutely damn right. Black people have to take responsibility as well. I don't think race has anything to do with anything, but for the Democrat Party, that is a cornerstone of their entire ideology. Joe Biden, Democrats continue to create division in America. But I, th I thought he was supposed to bring everyone together, right? Like Barack Obama. It's all a bunch of foosery. It's all a bunch of lies. Some students turned their backs on him, which he is true here, FJB. But they did turn their backs on him. An American father and patriot destroys the left's propaganda that claims black people are held back in America because of their race. And he rightfully represents and resents the fact that this self-defeating and divisive narrative is being ingrained in the minds of young people. He's absolutely correct, which is a remarkable thing to sit there and inculcate this type of value of that there's some nameless, faceless, shadowy figure out there. There's a system that's been created out there by Democrats, Republicans, whoever the hell they want to spew, that's actually going to oppress black people and people of color. Why would you ever want to sit there and try to make yourself better or to be innovative or whatever it may be to try to make yourself a better person to succeed in this country when you know that there's some nameless, faceless, shadowy figure out there holding you down? It, it, is, it is such a disgusting and divisive narrative, and it's not a narrative that's going to sit there and I don't know, motivate people or uplift them, which now you're giving this at their graduation speech. And it's a remarkable thing to say that there was a reckoning on race. No, there wasn't. I mean, this is the Democrat Party 
that thinks that on average 10,000 black people, unarmed black men, are being shot in the streets and being hunted down by the police. Folks, it's, it's like 18. It's not even close. And of those 18, some of them were reaching for an officer's firearm, shooting him with a taser, uh, putting him in a chokehold, about to kill the officer. So there's, of those 18 that were, you know, actually less than that of maybe just randomly just being shot by the police or being in a situation that led them to being killed by the police. So you could probably count on two hands the amount of black men that are being killed in the streets, unarmed black men, by the police. But yeah, you know, it's 10,000. It's, it's a remarkable stuff, what people believe in. Folks, there was a stat out there that just came out on Jesse Waters show that said like Americans think that the population of black people make up like 49% of our country or something like that, like 41 to 49%. You know how insane that is? It's like black people represent 13% of our country. It's not 41 or 49%. And black men make up like seven or 8% of the country. It's insane how like far out there some people are. I'm not saying I know everything. Look, I'm not a gem. I call myself an idiot all the time. I ain't better than anybody. I just got a camera and a microphone. But it's remarkable to me that you really think that 41 to 49% of people in this country are black. Really? <laughs> You're so far out there if you'd believe that. He goes, what is democracy? Black men are being killed in the street. No, they're not, Joe. No, they're not. But he's going to spew this garbage. And uh, it's insulting to these people. It's absolutely insulting. And he's going to sit there and say, oh, well, I sit behind the Resolute desk in the Oval Office. I have two busts in my office, one of Martin Luther King, Dr. King, and Bobby Kennedy. And I really have to make these types of decisions while looking at those busts to try to end racism and poverty. Get the fuck out of here, Joe. No, I don't mean to cuss, but it's so remarkable that he's going to push this stuff. And he goes on to say, in America, we're all created equal. Extremists close the doors of opportunity, strike down affirmative action, attack the values of diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's a remarkable statement, you guys. I'm not making this up. Look at it right here. It's a remarkable statement that he could say the words extremist. Remember, you know, everybody else is divisive. You know, everybody else is not bringing anybody together, but this guy's going to do it calling you an extremist because you support this country. You wave the American flag. You want to make America great again, all the while Joe Biden wants to destroy it. I think Joe Biden's the extremist, right? Joe Biden's the one that's giving $40 million every two weeks to the Taliban. Joe Biden is actually funding terrorism. Joe Biden's giving $10 billion to the Iranians so that they can fund terrorism because they're the leading sponsor of terror. I think Joe Biden's an extremist of, I don't know, pulling out of Afghanistan and allowing people to fall from the fucking sky and die. I think it's Joe Biden Democrat Party that allowed ISIS to flourish, even though Barack Obama during his time said they were the JV squad. Donald Trump rolls in, make America great again, and steamrolls those terrorists and takes them out within two weeks. Joe Biden allows the Iranians to go after our merchant vessels and not just ours, but our allies as well. He allows the Iranians, the Houthis, Hamas, and everybody else, these terrorist organizations, to go after our military installations over 127 times. We hit over 200 times before we actually decided to do anything. I think he's a little bit of the extremist. I think it's a little bit extreme to go on somebody's graduation and tell them there's some nameless, faceless, shadowy figure out there fucking holding you down when there's nobody out there holding you down. You're graduating college and he's going to sit there and spew this nonsense. You're damn right it pisses me off. Because this dude calls everybody extremists for closing doors of opportunity. Now, here's the remarkable thing. In the same sentence, strike down affirmative action. And then he goes on to say, attack values of diversity, equality, and inclusion. Doesn't affirmative action actually remove equality because you're sitting there and allowing somebody to get inside a university or a job based on their race, but now you're offsetting that and basically not allowing somebody else to get into that very same job because they're a different race than the other person, meaning that you just removed equality. There is no equality at that point for the Democrat Party. I'm telling you, folks, it's a cornerstone. This whole racist stuff, this racism, race about that, race this, race that. It's a cornerstone of their party. It's disgusting stuff. It's despicable. And uh, for a guy that's talking about Martin Luther King, right? Dr. King bust. He says it right here. You know, for a guy that says that, you know, doesn't really take his words to heart because we should not be worried about people's skin color, their race, their ethnicity. I care more about somebody's character. It's exactly what Dr. King talked about. Maybe Joe Biden should actually listen to Dr. King once in a while rather than listening to the nut jobs that are in his party. Well, speaking of nut jobs, we got Michael Cohen. <laughs> now, I'm not big into the drama, folks. Okay, a lot of the theatrics you see me on the show, moving around a lot, having fun, in the Trump voice, Trump's the best the president in American history. It's for entertainment, right? I'm truthfully not really like this. I'm, I'm an introvert. I'm a very quiet guy. I keep to myself. I'm a loner. But I don't really like drama. So that's why I don't really cover these court cases. But some people are asking, hey, Brad, what's going on with Donald Trump? What's going on with Mr. 45 and this Michael Cohen nut job? So we got some updates here and I'm gonna give you a little bit of backstory because a lot of people don't really kind of explain what the hell is going on here. 
So Michael Cohen admits to stealing $30,000 from the Trump organization. Now that's all fine and dandy. We'll get into that. But I want to give you a little bit of backstory of what's this trial all about? Everybody just keeps talking about, well, Trump's on trial. You know, Trump's being indicted 42 times. Okay, so Donald Trump had this hush money. It wasn't really hush money, you guys. He has this trial that's revolving around these allegations that supposedly, allegedly, he orchestrated payments to adult film actress Stormy Daniels and others to suppress these stories and this information before the 2016 presidential election. You might be going, Brad, isn't it 2024? Wasn't that like years ago, almost like a decade ago? Yes, you are correct, but this is the Democrat Party. These are people that are weaponizing our justice system to go after their political opponents and a former president. It's disgusting stuff, and there is no case here. And I will tell you there's no case with evidence today from Michael Cohen himself when he sits there and lies on the stand and steals money from the Trump organization with his own words. Oh, we'll get there, folks. Just bu buckle up, put it down, folks. We're in for the long haul here. So the prosecution here argues that Trump directed his former lawyer, Michael Cohen, who's a nut job. This dude's a psycho. He's a freak to arrange these payments, which were subsequently reimbursed and falsely recorded as legal expenses to conceal their true purpose, which all that statement's absolutely false from the prosecution, by the way. Central to the trial is the testimony of Michael Cohen. This guy is like the star witness. This guy is like the main testimony of this entire trial. And boy, oh boy, did it fall short big time. If this doesn't get thrown out, you guys, and I'm not just siding with Donald Trump because I like the guy and I love him and Mr. 47, hopefully. But um, this guy, it's just not going to work out. Michael Cohen's a psycho. I really do mean that, you guys. I'm not, I don't just call people crazy names, right? I'm not one that's just like, oh, you're a freak. You're a weirdo. No, no, no. I usually listen to them and then come to some sort of an analysis of why I think that way. Michael Cohen's off his rocker. Well, he claims that Trump, Cohen, and National Enquirer publisher David Pecker had a scheme to silence negative media coverage that could harm Trump's campaign. No evidence of this, by the way. Completely fabricated. Very similar to the Russia hoax, where the FBI like paid an informant to come up and say, oh, the, the Russians are colluding. Trump's in bed with the Russians. Complete hoax. Cohen has testified about the direct involvement in facilitating the payments to Daniels and how it was intended to prevent her from publicizing an alleged affair with Trump, which Trump denies. This is huge because it's all Michael Cohen's words. Michael Cohen was the facilitator of all this. And he's alleging, hey, Trump gave me a bunch of money to sit there and make this person shut up because he didn't want to look bad on the campaign trail. So you would have to take this person's words as being credible, right? Like they would have to give you some sort of persona, some sort of credibility on their end for you to believe them. And I want to bring that up because right here, you're going to see that credibility kind of went out the door in yesterday's testimony. So in court on Monday, Donald Trump's former attorney, Michael Cohen, admitted to stealing. The dude steal $30,000 from the Trump organization. You might be saying, oh, Brad, how did they come to that conclusion? Like, did they have to read between the lines or did they kind of just like formulate their own thoughts to get there? No, the dude admitted it. He admitted to stealing money on the stand. Check this out. The theft occurred when Cohen requested $50,000 of reimbursements for this IT service and it only cost 20,000. So meaning, well, if it costs 20, Trump gave you 50, where's the 30? Cohen and his prosecution's final witness in Trump's hush money trial, presided by the Judge Juan Merchant, or whatever the hell the guy's name is, in Manhattan Supreme Court. <laughs> On the stand, Cohen made his admission during the defense attorney, this cross-examination. You stole from the Trump organization, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, -y, I did. Right here, exact words. The dude admits to breaking the law on the stand. Oh, it gets worse. Dude, it gets worse. He asked if he ever repaid the money. Did you ever have to plead guilty to larceny? No, sir. <laughs> Stole money, committed a crime, never pleaded guilty to larceny. At the defense table, Trump shook his head and pursed his lips. Absolutely insane. Prosecutors have argued that Trump falsified business records by describing a reimbursement for the Stormy Daniels payment and other expenses as payment for legal services pursuant to a retainer agreement, even though Cohen never had a retainer agreement with Trump. It's, it's, such, it's such a fabricated trial. Throughout his cross-examination this morning, defense attorney has attempted to legitimize the repayment arrangement between Trump and Cohen in 2017. Now check this out. Check this out. Remember, star witness here, 
the guy that was like the main person for orchestrating all this hush money during another exchange with the defense attorney cohen admitted he would be willing to lie under oath you have to build credibility to believe a witness credibility is out the door the dude's a criminal he's lied and now he's admitting to lying did you mean it would when you said that you had revenge in a dish best served cold yes sir so this guy's out for revenge he's gonna do everything he possibly can to go after donald trump for this revenge so much so he's willing to lie under oath you are willing to lie under oath if it affects your personal life correct now cohen said oh well, i didn't understand the question you testified under oath months ago that you are willing to lie if it affects your personal life correct blanche asked which cohen agreed so i'm asking the same question to you now would you still be willing to lie if it affects your personal life after Merchant sustained the judge an objection from the prosecution. Blanche asked, would you be willing to lie if it affects your personally? Folks? Yes, sir! <laughs> Dude. Hey, would you be willing to lie under oath if it affects you personally? Yes, sir! Did you steal from the Trump campaign? Yes, sir! But we're supposed to believe all this foosery knowing that you stole from the Trump campaign and you were the guy that allegedly received hush money to then give the Stormy Daniels to shut her trap over something that allegedly happened, even though we're not even so sure, and that you're willing to sit there and go after Donald Trump in any way, shape, or form to get back at him, and we're supposed to believe you? Folks, this trial is a sham. It's completely hocus pocus. It's made up. And so what I think is going to happen is I think this thing is going to be thrown out. Now, this was massively damaging for five reasons. One, he admitted to theft. He admitted to stealing $30,000, which undermines his entire credibility. He's willing to lie under oath, which again, he's not credible when he admits. That means who knows what he's saying is true. The whole thing's a sham, meaning there's inconsistencies. There's a cast of doubt of his current claims that Trump ever had involvement in this hush money. That has to go with the contradictory testimonies. Now, allegations from Cohen's former lawyer, Robert Castillo. Cohen's former attorney recounted Cohen's previous statements suggesting that he had no incriminating information about Trump. Listen to that carefully. We have another witness. Cohen's own lawyer, his former attorney, said that Cohen said himself that he had no incriminating information about Donald Trump, but all of a sudden he has all this hush money information. All of a sudden he has all this stuff that's supposed to be truthful, even though he's saying that he's willing to lie on the stand under oath to go after Donald Trump. Defense strategy is completely out the window now. I mean, exposing Cohen's past dishonesties is like the least of it, not to mention his unethical behavior and the defense aims to undermine the prosecution's narrative completely that Trump falsified business records. Throw that out the window. I mean, folks, this is this is a blown case. It is over. It's a done deal. We all know it was a sham. We all know what they're doing. They're trying to keep Trump off the campaign trail. They're trying to make it so Joe Biden has some sort of edge over Donald Trump and it ain't working the polls. We all see through it. Well, speaking of Donald Trump, speaking of Joe Biden, speaking of all these Democrats and everything else, you got Donald Trump in office, hopefully here coming up with the election, but you also have Joe Biden in office currently, and I think the guy should be impeached for his treason and his handling of the southern border. Now, I also think that not only should he be impeached, but I think his own son should be in jail for what's going on with the Brisma holding stuff, and then we got that bad boy right here. So Hunter Biden is now claiming he's lying once again i know typical right from this family he claims that he didn't introduce dad to barisma exec despite admitting that they dined together he did this with devin archer now if you recall i know we're freaking rehashing this whole thing over again but there's just information galore out there you had hunter biden that was on the board of barisma holdings it was a ukrainian natural gas company even though hunter biden didn't know jack shit about natural gas which is why uh shokin the prosecutor of the ukrainians was looking under the hood of the Ukrainian gas money, uh, gas company, Brisma Holdings, because he's going, well, what? I mean, that was literally one of the questions he asked. What does your son know about natural gas? Like, why is he on the board of a natural gas company when this guy can't tell his mouth from his ass? Like, what? He doesn't know. He's, he doesn't know anything. He knows how to snort co crack cocaine. He knows how to hook up with prostitutes. That he's very good at. So he should be a pimp, not a guy on the board of directors of a Ukrainian gas company. So they were looking under this whole wheel deal, you know, seeing if money was being embezzled or funneling from a shell company into the, you know, Biden's family bank accounts, which they were allegedly were being careful here because of legal reasons. So one of his business partners of Brisma Holdings, again, the natural gas company, was a guy named Devin Archer. 
And Devin Archer came out against the Bidens by saying, hey, they're corrupt as shit. They're taking money. We were doing all this stuff, yada, yada, yada. And Devin Archer goes, I, I never talked business with my father. And Joe Biden goes, yes, sir. Never talked business with my son. I have a son. Who's my son? I have a son. Yeah, Joe, you have a son. And you talked a lot of business with him. You didn't talk to him about the weather like you claimed. You were sitting right next to him when he was texting. He said it so himself. We all know what was going on. So much so, Devin Archer had multiple conversations with Joe Biden. Shit, Devin Archer, Hunter Biden's business partner, went to dinner with the Bidens. He was a family friend. He went golfing with the Bidens. And Joe Biden's going, never talk to the guy in my life. So here we are again with a completely different dude, a totally different guy. And he's coming out and saying, hey, you know what? Never introduce the guy to my dad. Even though this dude testified that he did, in fact, he did, in fact, introduce him. Hunter Biden indicated he did not introduce the Brisma board advisor to his father, despite testifying February 28th that then VP Biden attended a pair of dinners with the dude. It's unbelievable. I mean, the amount of lies that they get away with. Like I said, Donald Trump doesn't pay a parking ticket. Massive grand jury, massive jury out there. They're throwing investigations out there with the Russia hoax, all this stuff. They raid Mar-a-Lago, but no, no, no. The, the Bidens are completely clean. You guys, it's the cleanest family that's ever existed in American politics. They're so clean. They're so clean. There's no doo-doo. Folks, Joe Biden is as clean. His whole family is as clean as his underwear drawers. We all know how dirty that is. That is disgusting stuff, and I hope I got a laugh out of that. <laughs> well, speaking of the man's dirty underwear drawers, here, here's the man himself again. I'm trying to work on my transitions here. I'm trying to upgrade a little bit. Biden declares diversity, equity, inclusion, the core strength of America. So this guy just goes to a graduation ceremony, a bunch of black people, and totally reams them how America is terrible and how it's suppressing black people from being uplifted and actually making something of themselves in this country. It's a complete fraud and totally BS. If you're black, your skin color has nothing to do with you being succeeding or being able to succeed in this country. It's a wild thing to say. And it's a wild belief. It's disgusting stuff. If you're, I don't care who the hell you are. You can make it in this country. You just got to work hard. I'm not saying there's not going to be people out there that are a-holes trying to hold you down. That's not what I'm saying. There's always going to be racists. racist. There's always going to be bigots. There's always going to be idiots out there. But you got to sit there and, you know, work your way and grind. I have my own stories. I'm a white guy. I've always shared there's a massive talent agency that said I wouldn't be let into the agency, not because of my skill or my acting. No, no, no. It's because I'm white. Yes, I was told that legitimately by one of the top three talent agencies out there. And by the way, there also was a company had nothing to do with my race, but had to do with my political values that would not publish my book, even though I signed an NDA to work with them, even though they had a editor that actually worked on this psycho's book right over here, uh, had a whole agreement, went on months of telling me and uh, ended up not wanting to do it. All because they didn't agree with my political viewpoints. Quote, we can't find an editor in this entire industry to sit there and edit your book, it's so bad. So I don't know, did pretty well so far, was selling in Walmart, hell, was selling Barnes and Nobles, selling online on Amazon, seemed to do pretty damn well and the Patriots seemed to love it. So, but did I, did I let that hold me back? Did I sit there go, oh, <laughs> there's some faceless, nameless shadowy figure out there? Even though it wasn't nameless, faceless, shit, I know the actual association. I know the actual firm that did it. I just don't want to say anything because I don't want to suit up the wazoo for calling them out because there's NDAs. Well, speaking at the Detroit NAACP, that tells you everything you need to know. Fight for Freedom Fund Dinner. On Sunday night, President Joe Biden championed DEI values. You want to see DEI? Do you want to see how DEI works? Look at Karine Jean-Pierre. She's the epitome of how terrible DEI is. She was hired because she's a black lesbian. She wasn't hired because she's good at speaking. She wasn't hired because her brain works. She wasn't hired for anything else other than the fact that she's female, she's black, and a lesbian. That is it. Let her, I mean, I'm, I'm not taking that as like, well, you know, I'm making this up. I think it might be. No, I've watched every single White House press briefing. She is not capable of that job. The only people, folks, the White House, we did the story. The White House tried to stage a coup on her. They try to sit there and strategize on how they get rid of this broad. And they can't fire her because she's female, black, and a lesbian. They'd be deemed racist. There'd be riots in the streets. They'd burn down cities over it. So now they're screwed. Now he's pushing this whole DEI. DEI, is, it's terrible. I really do. I think DEI is, uh, I, I think it's like a cancer to society. I think, I think it's a tear on social fabric. I don't think it sits there and makes things better. I think it makes things worse. So the Daily Wire reported earlier this month that the Biden administration has launched a sweeping effort to embed the diversity, equity, and inclusion agenda throughout the federal bureaucracy, leveraging race and sexuality-based employees associations to push for left-wing ideology within the administrative state. You guys, I, I plug this all the time, but really, it's a timely book. Trojan Horse, How the Left is Destroying America. We talk all about this in the book. We talk about critical race theories. 
uh, uh, r critical race. Wow. Well, it comes from critical law studies, but critical race theory is what it's called today. We talk about how it started and how it wove itself in their education system and all fabrics of society. So you can equip yourself with this psycho stuff right here that they're implementing in all facets of our government and our military. Our military can't keep its numbers, you guys. Mind you, you have people that want to wipe us off the face of the earth. You have Russia that wants to take over Ukraine, which by the way, you guys, if you think Ukraine's going to win, I know I'm going on a rant here. If you think Ukraine is going to win, you're out of your freaking mind. You, the Ukrainians know that they're not going to win. The whole, basically what's going on in Ukraine right now, we're giving them much of money and military aid, right? We're giving them military grade equipment. Well, the hope is that they can sit there and gain land and use whatever gains they've made to negotiate some sort of deal with the Russians. There's no way that the Russians are going to lose this war against the Ukrainians. It's only a matter of time. So that's what needs to be done. But you have this guy sending them a bunch of money. You have people that actually want to harm us and our allies, which you see from the Iranians, you see from the Houthis, you see from Hamas, you see from the Taliban, which are getting $40 million every two weeks. You see this going on all around the globe. It's a big problem that we can't sit there and actually increase our military. So this guy wants to sit there and trash it, typical of the Democrat Party in doing it. So we got news here that there's a petition circulating inside the U.S. Secret Service, Service that flags concerns about a number of recent Secret Service incidences indicated of inadequate training, a double standard in disciplinary actions and vulnerability. Now, I don't know if that's true. These are rumors. I'm not sure, but we'll see what comes of it. And I'll make sure I keep you guys updated. We also have the White House here denying the use of drugs before the State of the Union. Now, <laughs> I got to take a poll. Patriots, we got to do a poll in the chat. Okay, maybe we'll do it on the community tab too. How many of you, give me a yes or no in the comment section of live chat. It helps both. How many of you, I don't know if we'll get this out. How many of you think Joe Biden was not on drugs? How many of you think Joe Biden was completely himself? He wasn't hopped up, doped up on nothing. How many of you? So question, do you think Joe Biden was on drugs? Tell me yes, because I think he was. I think Joe Biden was gone, something like his son. I don't know what the hell it was. I don't know if it's Adderall, Ritalin, or maybe he got hopped up on some more milk, but I don't know what this guy was on. But that state of the union, he was definitely hyped up and he started coming down really quick there folks and i bring that up i bring it up because republicans say biden should be tested for artificial stimulation before the debate 100 percent agree with this can you imagine what we'll find out of this can you imagine what we will see because look if he goes up on that stage because maybe he's like hey you know what We're, it's going to show up on the draw it's going to show up on the test we, we can't take anything can you imagine that something's being exposed of joe biden so he's going to be all groggy, right? Uh, I drove 18 wheelers. I worked for the Girl Scouts. I was selling cookies. That one actually might be true because he's a weirdo. He sniffs children. But <laughs> I knocked on doors with Abraham Lincoln. No, you didn't, Joe. No, you didn't. Okay. So I think there should be a drug test. I want to ask you guys. You think there should be a drug test? Donald Trump thinks so. I think there should be, look, if he's going to make all these demands, Joe Biden's going to make all these crazy ass demands. I think the one demand that actually should be allowed here is give a drug test because all the Democrats think that Donald Trump's on something. Remember when they gave him shit because his hand was shaking, his hand was shaking like this because I don't, I don't know why it was shaking, but he, he needed a glass of water. So he's just drinking and shaking just slightly. It was slightly. It wasn't even that bad. It was probably like that. And they blew it up, right? The 25th Amendment, he's not fit to serve office, right? He's out of shape. He's eating McDonald's, you know, all these crazy things. He has Coke. That's all he drinks is Coke. You have this guy here. Falls up a flight of stairs numerous times. How many of you, hand to God, knew that there was a short staircase to get on Air Force One? I had no idea before his presidency. I didn't know that. Folks, the short staircase is the last step before he takes one of those, you know, those chairs that goes up. The stairs, like it rides you up, like we've seen those infomercials where the elderly person gets strapped in and it just like takes them up like this. You know what I'm talking about? That's him going to get on Air Force One. This guy might trip over a blade of grass and kill himself by accident. That's not too far off. As I've always said, the White House aides are terrified that this guy's going to trip over a camera cable. He fights with his teleprompter. I'm not even so sure if I'm looking at Joe Biden there. There's some puppet running the show here, folks. I don't know who the hell it is. I, my speculations at the deep state. Now, the reason why I don't go too far into that in the same way, these liberals, these Democrats, these woke people go, it's, there's, there's systematic racism out there, right? There's institutional racism. And then my follow-up is 
who in those institutions is racist so that we can fight it together because nobody likes racism, even though for some reason they always call us racist. We could tell them tell we're blue in the face that we don't like racism, that we're not racist, that we hate racist or racism. However you want to phrase it, they don't believe us. So in the same way, I don't like when conservatives or Republicans go, well, it's the deep state. Well, who in the deep state are the people that's pulling the strings here? It's not specific enough. Like, I want fucking names. You know what I mean? Like, you tell me, well, it's the FBI, you know, it's the CIA. It's, you know, give me like, is it the FBI director? Like, is it the CIA director? Like, who are these people? Because these bureaucrats are not elected officials and they're like the managerial class. It's kind of coined from Vivek Ramaswamy are the ones that are constantly there, right? You know, the ones that are reelected, every president's out four to eight years. There's people working in our intelligence community and other facets of government, the executive branch that are constantly there, whether the president comes and goes, they're just always there. So the, the deep state is, is the managerial class that's managing the country, that's running it, regardless of whoever the president is. And that's kind of the closest definition as I can get to the deep state of like, who actually are these people? And I've never been given a clear answer. There's a great book by Jason Chaffetz, who used to be the former congressman of Utah. Him and Trey Gowdy were my two boys, man. Those are my two main congressmen. And that means a lot because I don't trust government. I don't like congressmen. I don't like congresswomen. Look, they're, they're political pawns. They're tools. They're supposed to go out there and do our bidding. Those two guys, Jason Chaffetz and Trey Gowdy, I actually liked. I actually trusted those guys. And I still do to this day. Jason Chaffetz has a book called The Deep State. Highly recommend you guys read it. I think it's going to be an eye-opener because I used to think it was a conspiracy theory. I used to think the deep state was a bunch of nonsense. I know I'm deviating from this, but I used to think like, eh, sounds a little far-fetched, sound out there. No, no, that book made me a believer, man. Coming from that guy, boy, oh boy, I believe. Let me know. Do you think Joe Biden should be tested for artificial stimulation? Because I think, I think the guy's on something. I don't think this guy's legit. It's really odd how he has all these speeches of him rambling, drooling into a drip tray, can't find his way off a stage, talking to dead people hearing and conversing with them and seeing them, looking for dead people in the crowd, taking photos of people don't exist. Look, I don't believe it. This guy, you know, trigger trauma over pressure, right? Can't get a single thought out of his damn head correctly. And we're supposed to believe that this guy could stand up there legitimately for an hour and a half and give a state of a union address and barely fumble through his words towards the tail end he was. I don't think so. He was hopped up on something. We all know how Joe Biden acts. We all know how he actually talks. Ain't no way in hell he's not on something. So big win, hopefully for Trump there, if we can actually get that pushed through. And like I said, they think Donald Trump's on something, then fine, test them both. I don't give a shit. But we also have this right here. New poll out, folks, finds that over 60% of independents support deporting immigrants. This is a big deal, you guys, because not only are independents having massive issues with the economy as well, but now they're on our side with deporting illegal immigrants. So clearly what the Republican Party is doing of busing and flying these immigrants to Democrat states is actually, or Democrat cities rather, is actually having an effect here. So over 60% of independents, that's a remarkable number, believe that we should deport most or all illegal immigrants currently present in the United States, folks. That's what Donald Trump wants to do, right? He wants to get rid of 20 to 25 million people, unprecedented, has never happened. It's gonna massive military oper operation to do something like that. I think it should. Is it feasible? I don't know. Are the optics of it good? Have an ICE go door to door with military personnel, escorting people on the planes and buses and getting them out? Probably not a good look. So you think the country was bad before with them burning down our cities because of George Floyd or some black guy got killed while he's shooting a police officer. Wait till Donald Trump starts going door to door and removing illegal immigrants. Bleep is going to hit the fan. The poll from Reuters found that the solid majority of independents are in favor of this policy, 61%. The policy garnered the support of even a larger share of registered Republicans, damn right, 85%, baby, of whom said they're in favor of deporting most or all of them. Now, registered Democrats were the only group, shocker, that were not in favor of deporting illegal immigrants. Only 26% say that they support the policy, which is pretty damn good. Hey, I'll take, I'll take 25, okay? Shit, I would take 15. Now, you have here 54% oppose the U.S., uh, us, uh, the use of detention facilities. Of course they do. Of course they do. Because they love illegal immigration. They love crime, you guys. They love all these things. If they didn't, they wouldn't continue to vote for it, okay? Don't tell me that somebody is opposed to something when they consistently vote for somebody that actually wants to implement the very thing that they oppose, allegedly oppose, right? I'm not big in the homeless. Then why do you have the most homeless population in the entire United States? I'm not for crime. Why is crime so bad? I hate homicides. Why is homicide so bad? You know, oh, well, there's, there's somebody that's oppressing black people. Then why are black people so oppressed by the Democrat party? 
Like, you notice there's a constant theme here of, like, they can't rationalize the fact that their policies and their ideologies suck and that everywhere that they implement it sucks and it's causing states and localities to be crippled, i.e., you look at the state of California, how you have a nut job in office named Gavin Newsom that sat there and lost a $100 billion surplus. How do you do that? I don't know. But according to him in yesterday's episode, it was because of climate change. No, no, that's real. That is not satire. I'm not joking. It's not like Joe Biden. No, no kidding. Really? He sat there and complained losing a hundred billion dollars with a B, not a million. You might have just spit out your coffee and pulled over. Folks, a hundred billion dollars with a B surplus, more money than what was expected to come in. Just lost it. The same guy that sat there and like millions of dollars, might be in the billions, just disappeared for homeless. Just gone. No idea what happened. Oh, oh well, nobody's fired. Eh, just can't find it. No big deal. We'll make it up somewhere else. Unbelievable, these people get elected, but Democrats vote them in. I'm not like, I'm not voting them in. Conservative Republicans are voting them in. Democrats are a constant theme to a constant problem. Immigration, crime, increasing the deficit, higher taxes, higher premiums on your health care, right? I don't know, funding terrorism now. That one's new. That I'll give them that one. That one's new. I wasn't expecting Democrats to go that far funding terrorism, but now they're doing it. Well, you're damn right they're doing it. What do you mean? We just got them talking about how they're giving the Taliban $40 million every two weeks. You mean they're not funding terrorism? You mean... You mean the billions of dollars of military grade equipment that Joe Biden says, ah, leave it for them. They'll be fine. Black Hawks, night vision, goggles, ammunition, machine guns, all that stuff. Really? He's not, he's not funding terrorists. <laughs> really? Munitions just left and right. Vehicles all over the place. Airplanes just left there. Really? Yeah, he's not funding terrorism. The guy that's giving Iranians $10 billion. That's a leading sponsor of terrorism. Barack Obama gave them a billion dollars cash when they were still the number one leading sponsor of terrorism. No idea where that money went. May have went to, I don't know, paying off Hamas to go after and kill 1,700 Israelis. Maybe that much. So that one's new. That one I'll give to the Democrats. They have shifted really far left, but they'll tell us they haven't. That's why when you go to a Target or Walgreens, everything's locked up. Lip balm, face masks, chapstick, toothbrushes, all that stuff's just locked up behind cages. You can't get it anymore. Coffee grinds, you name it. Mancha Mimas, maple syrup, all that stuff. I. It sounds so outlandish. It sounds so far-fetched that it seems like I'm making it up. Like, oh, cool, man. He's riffing. Oh, that's a good set. That's really funny. That's hilarious. Man, that's, I can't believe you made all that up. No, no, I didn't make it up. It's, it's real. All of it's real. It's not satire. It's not fake. It's real. Who would have ever thought that you'd walk into a freaking Walgreens or Target and see chapstick locked up behind glass so people can't steal it? Your clothing is all shackled together by one massive security measure because people are stealing it. And it's all happening in Democrat-ran cities because they love it, you guys. They voted for it. And they'll vote politicians in office. They say they won't love it, right? They say one thing with their mouth. Actions do completely different. They suck as a party. They really do. We would love to have you on the Republican side of the aisle if you if you ever, I don't know, have the fuses go together, you know, you know this working. Some things they get, you guys. Like those 25% of people, the 26% here, they have their head on straight when it comes to illegal immigration. Like they're not all gone, right? There, there's some hope. I mean, definitely with independence. It turns out, I didn't know this. We have a lot of independents that watch the show. To put this in perspective, it actually freaking blew my mind. We have more independents that watch this show than actually conservatives Republicans. Isn't that crazy? Hey, we love you. Hey, we'll take you. Come on in. You're feeling the pain that we are. I got no problems having a lot of independents watching the show. No qualms whatsoever. If you're a Democrat, we're going to hound you. This ain't the independents' fault, okay? None of that. We blame Democrats for a reason. I'm not saying Republicans are off, but this is what this channel is about. Like, I've always said we're biased. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? Of course we're biased. <laughs> I'm open about it. I'm open about it. Like, I'm a hound of Democrats because what the channel's all about. I'm hounding Democrats because they suck at everything. If you're independent, welcome. If you're Democrat, you know, welcome to. Hopefully you wake up to what the hell we're talking about here. Well, last thing we got here, speaking of the withdrawal from Afghanistan, I was bringing it up for a reason. Top general warned Biden ahead of time. Now, you go back in our video catalog, we talked about this, okay? We talked about it. We talked about the fact that why is everybody so shocked in the Biden administration that the Taliban just is running roughshod over the entire country, that the country just turned to turmoil and chaos I don't know, in like two weeks. I bring up the time period because that was what was talked about. It was mainstream news. We talked about it here on the show. So everybody was like, God, I, I, I couldn't believe that they took it over so fast. I couldn't believe that terrorists would sit there and take over the country that quickly. We all knew. Like, we all knew. What are you talking about, you idiot? We all knew what would happen. Here it is. I mean, this is nothing new for us, but it's news nonetheless. So you got General Austin Miller a former top U.S. military commander in Afghanistan, warned the Biden administration that Afghanistan would get very bad very fast when American troops began the withdrawal. 
And you have other idiots out there. I should have called him an idiot. He's actually a pretty smart guy. You got Destiny. That sits there going, well, it could have been done a little bit better, but it had to be done. Trump was the one that implemented the time period. Look, there was conditions on it, okay? And just look, even if there was, like, even if there wasn't conditions, you're the commander in chief of the biggest military God has ever seen in human existence. Well, we got to follow the timeline. If it was a dumb thing that Trump did, it's a remarkable, right? All these people rag on Trump, how stupid he is with his foreign policy and all these other things, which I don't agree with, by the way, that they go, well, we got to follow suit with this stupid thing. Well, if you thought it was so dumb, you idiot, then why would you sit there and follow suit with a dumb thing that you thought was dumb and then blame it on the guy for what he did? Isn't that remarkable? Oh, no, Donald Trump doesn't know how to do foreign policy and his, you know, he had a timeline for pulling out of Afghanistan with a bunch of terrorists and well, it was stupid, but we did it. Like what? What the hell's wrong with you? So you have this taking place. And by the way, Trump's own team said, look, we would have never pulled out of Afghanistan if they never met our conditions. Okay. So you got Joe Biden waking up one morning because he didn't have his milk in time. He goes, let's pull out. Let's just do it. Which is why you had people falling from planes and leaving billions of dollars of military great equipment and 13 service members dying and getting blown to bits. So Miller's warning, which went largely unheeded by the White House, shocker, were revealed to White House investigators last month when the former top U.S. general testified to the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Why, why is this a shock? Why is this a revelation? How is it, we, this is why I say watch the show, right? How is it us as a community of patriots and conservatives in a freaking closet could sit here and, and, and know this information ahead of time? Like we talked about it when it happened. I literally said on the show, nobody here surprised. Yeah, we knew it was going to happen. So why is our congressmen and women going, whoa, whoa, who could have thought? Maybe you know, I'm telling you, these congressmen and women are idiots. They are freaking idiots. On the Republican side too, you guys, I, like, like I blame Democrats a lot, but Republicans as well are freaking, there's some dumbasses. You guys got to agree. There's some really big dumbasses over there. So you got them testifying to the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Look, I'm, again, I'm not saying I'm a peach. I'm not saying I'm better than anything. I'm an idiot. But again, if an idiot could sit here and reveal and look at this stuff going, yeah, who, who would, like, it speaks volumes, right? I'm not holier than thou. I'm not smarter than a lot of people. I've always said I'm an, the show's called the Bald Brad Show. It's not supposed to be taken seriously. We go over some serious stuff here and I think there's good commentary and it's fun. We have fun together, but you understand what I, I don't take myself serious. That's why it's called the Bald Brad Show. It's not called the Bald, it's not called the Brad Roberts Show, right? I don't think I'm as good as Benny Johnson and, and Dan Bongino as all these other people. I don't take myself seriously. Come on. I know I say a lot of stupid stuff, but we have fun saying it. <laughs> so 13 service members were taken. All I just want to say is there was a lack of understanding of the risk. Oh, really? Oh, really? If you can't assess something as simple as Afghanistan and what would be the ramifications of it, you have no business being in office. You have no business running foreign policy. And it speaks volumes. Look around, you guys. China's you know, performing the biggest military drills ever off the coast of Taiwan. We all know what wants to happen with them. We've released audio recordings of provinces that they have to make sure are built up because if those go down, then their invasion's kaput. Or if they have World War III, that's not going to work out for them. Their people are going to starve, all these things. You got Iran sitting there going after everybody with their funding of terrorism. You got Hamas, you know, going after the Israelis. Israelis now bombing the hell out of the Gazans. Yeah, you yeah, have stuff happening everywhere. Okay, because Joe Biden's weak. His foreign policy is weak. He looks weak. He stutters. Not so much really more. It's more swords fumbling because his brain doesn't work. But all these things are wrong with this guy. I shouldn't pick on him for stuttering. I'm sorry, that kind of came out wrong. But you understand what I mean. His, his lack of train of thought, his lack of, you know, being cognizant, knowing what the hell's going on. All these things have ramifications. And guess what? Democrats in the millions are going to pour out for this guy. Let that one sink in. I still can't fathom it. I really can't. Like, I get the idea that people are going to turn out for this guy, but it's a remarkable thing that as, as reamed as we are getting from behind from the Democrat Party and Joe Biden, that administration, that they still will go out to the voting poll and say, yes, sir, may I have another? Like, instead of Joe Biden, can you just write, yes, sir, may I have another on your ballot for all of us? Because you're screwing over all of us right now for voting for Joe Biden and any Democrat out there. Like, you are really screwing all of oh, I, I want my family from Mexico or China or wherever to come in illegally, so I need to... Really? You're going to screw over everybody? I'm not going to go on another rant. I think you guys know where I'm going with that one. Well, folks, if you haven't already, uh, watch the video all the way through, please. This is an announcement. I might make a separate video about this. More than you guys giving your hard-earned money to the membership tab. If you want to become a member, we love having Bald Bread Army grow, folks. 99 cents a month. I know Bidenomics is happening. I know inflation sucks and we're pinching here, all of us. But it does help run the show. I'm a one-man guy, okay? I edit the video. I record it. I do all this stuff myself. There is no assistant. I got nobody working for me. We don't even make any money off YouTube. So you helping actually does fund the show. 
we get paid for the software to do the editing and, and the subscriptions we have to do all these things. So it really does help tremendously. Please don't feel like you have to. You watching all the way through, if you guys stop midway through or any point and leave, it actually hurts the analytics and they won't send my video out. So believe it or not, you just watching all the way through, not skipping ahead or doing anything like that, just watching, does yeoman's work in supporting the channel. So I wanna to try to get that message out to all my viewers because it'll help us grow exponentially. If we hit that like button, leave us a comment down below. I don't even care what it is. Just put fuck Joe Biden. I don't care, FJB. Like anything will help support the show. So I kind of want to start pushing that a little bit more. I feel bad, you know, asking people to become members, you know, and stuff like that, because it's people's hard earned money, man. You guys work hard for your stuff. You know what I mean? Joe Biden wants to steal it. Uh, but, you know, speaking of money, I got a plug. I worked hard on this, you guys. I'm really proud of it. It's, it's my book, Trojan Horse, How the Left is Sure in America. You can get a signed copy at baldbrad.com. Or, um, you know, if you purchase on Amazon, it's, it's cheaper over there. Uh, you can get a signed copy through me off my website. But uh, uh, Amazon has a cheaper version. I think it's on sale right now. And uh, leave us a five-star review if you do purchase it. We do have a website, again, that even has merchandise. We've got Bald Brad Show uh, shirts, hoodies, mugs, cell phone cases, stickers. We got it all, folks. Head over there and check some stuff out. Just want to clarify again, I'm not making this up. Some of you might say, oh, it's a little bit pricey. There's no profit made off any of the merch, okay? I think there's like two cents because I can't put it any lower. So I'm not going to eat the cost. But just want you guys to be clear. I want you guys to swag out, have a little bit of fun with that. Uh, and that's it. That's, that's, that's all I want to say. Uh, enough of me rambling, ranting, raving. You guys are freaking awesome. You're true American patriots. Thank you again. I said this yesterday for the prayers and lovely messages for my mother. She is doing well. She's back home. She's pootering around. She's still hurt. Don't get me wrong. We're not out of the out of the was out of the weeds, out of the woods. However you want to phrase it. Uh, I told you I'm an idiot. Uh, uh, she's really appreciative too. She does watch the show. She does read your guys' comments. So thank you so much for all the wishes and uh, the prayers and all those things. It's, it's greatly appreciated, especially we are a family of Christians. So uh, thank you so much. Um, and with that being said, folks, we will be back here for another episode of The Bald Brad Show on The Bald Brad Show.